Hey, it's Dan, and welcome back to Unified Gaming. Now, you might not be aware, but I'm an absolute stat nerd. I love numbers, I love theory crafting, and I like trying to min-max everything down to the T. It's what I enjoy. And as for today, we're going to do exactly that. We're embracing that side, and I'm going to share with you a personal project that I've been working on for the past two or three weeks. And I've made it because I had an issue when I first started PvP. And you probably all have the same issue. What class should I play? What is it good at? What is it bad at? There's no real easy answer to this. Well, I've actually made something to try and answer that question. So if you are new here or you haven't realised it yet, this channel is all about PvP. I've got loads of builds to help you out. And it kind of embraces my sort of stat nerdy approach, trying to min-max everything. They're beginner and expert friendly, so they're well worth a look. Now, as for these charts that we're going to explore today, and you can see a few on screen, I've actually used my four years worth of experience in Cyrodiil, Battlegrounds, and this is across multiple platforms. Not many people have this expertise. I've played on the Xbox EU, I'm on 1040cp, I'm on PC EU, so I've got a really good insight into how console perform and PC. And to create the overviews, I've actually made them for Magicka and Stamina. I've spent weeks on this and I've refined them extensively. I've shared them with the likes of Zidane, Glyku, Dayality, Is There No One Else? of which used my idea for the chart based approach to make his own video, so that's well worth a look. And many other players also got involved and gave their feedback about the classes, the charts and so on. We've been able to make a true and objective overview for each class with very little bias. This means you can finally compare classes and different specs to each other. I've also broken down the classes into different categories to make it easier to realise what are they good at and what part could you build upon. We're going to jump into those and break them down as we explore the different classes, the good, the bad and the ugly. So when you build your next character you know what they're good at, what they're bad at so there's no nasty surprises. And if you do like these kind of videos where we look at numbers and all that good stuff and min-maxing and so on, then obviously leave a like, comment, subscribe, it lets me know that you want to see more of this. Now first up, we're going to look at a fan favourite, one of my favourite classes, and that's Magicka Sorcerer. You will see that there's 12 areas that help us really understand what this class is really good at, what they're and what they're just absolutely dreadful at, okay? And it's quite simple to read. The further the graph goes into the category, the stronger it is. So as you can see, obviously, single target burst is ridiculously high because that's its strength. For those people wanting to know what's happening behind the hood and all that wizardry, well, we actually have a 0 to 20 rating system and there's also a control as well to make sure all the graphs are accurate. This means we can actually compare Magicka to Magicka, Stamina to Stamina and even Magicka to Stamina. Every class and every chart uses the same scale and same approach. They also focus mainly on the class kit but do include other skills people would actually use. So proximity detonation wasn't included in Stamina tunes for obvious reasons, that's just stupid. Now we're going to look at Magsalk and explore the categories and what they actually mean in our first example and then we'll go through every other class at speed, okay? And if you do like these charts, feel free to leave a like, subscribe and you can download them and you can share them, that's absolutely fine. Just let them know that they came from us, okay? So for the single target burst, this is basically how much damage can you do in as quick a time as possible. Magicka Sorcerer has a stupidly powerful burst combination for a Magicka class. If you pull it off correctly, you can literally one-shot people. I've got a Magsaw build on the channel that does exactly that. It's absolutely crazy. For the single target damage, this is slightly different. This is all about how much damage can you do to one target exclusively. And this is things like your spammer balls. So it's not so much landing loads of things at once, but how hard does each ability hit. As you'll see from Magsawk, they their single target damage is actually really, really high. Frags hits like a truck. It's stupidly hard. You've got overload that hits hard. Everything they do is just hard hitting, but it's to one person, and that's what this is all about. Now the damage potential for dots looks at how much damage could we expect from our dots. Now as you can see, Magsalt doesn't get much damage from dots. They just don't really have any dots. You can't make a dot build with a Magsalt. So as you can see instantly, Magsalt is really good at single target, quite bad at dots. As for the AoE damage, well this looks at how much damage could we do in, in an area or to multiple people. And just like the single target, it's kind of focused on each ability, not burst. On Magsalk, you can do this somewhat okay. You've got things like Curse, you've got the Familiar, you've got Streak, but they're not really reliable. So that's why it's really low on the score. 
and then for AoE burst potential, it's like your single target burst. How much damage can we unload to multiple people in as quick a time as possible? So if you think of like a bomber as a really good example. Magsalt can't do this. It can't really burst multiple people at once. It struggles to hit multiple people in the first place. So you kind of expect those to be quite low. For the defense, this focuses on their ability to withstand incoming damage, obviously. It does also include heals as well, but there's not a big emphasis on that part, okay? Now Maxel has stupidly strong shields. They are like absolutely massive. And because of this, it makes them insanely tanky for a magical spec. So they're really hard to bring down, hence the high score. Well, sustain is, well, it's sustain, isn't it? It's basically how easy is it for you to manage your resources in a fight without becoming empty. For Magsalk, this is rather easy. You've got Dark Conversion, you can turn Stamina into Magicka, so you can see that they've got a pretty good sustain rating here. Mobility is your ability to get around the battlefield. Magsalk has Streak, Balance Storms. That means they can get in and out incredibly fast. It kind of reminds me a bit like Roadrunner. So you'll see this again, really, really high. Now the group utility is all about the ability to bring something useful for your team. Magsalk brings very little in all honesty. It's got Negate, which is just absolutely fantastic. And Stun, Fire Streak, but that's it. And you find that the Stun can be an inconvenience to your other damage dealers. So beyond the Negate, you're kind of running out there, guys. Uh, that's why it's a really low score. Self Heal Strength looks at your ability to literally heal yourself from the brink of death back to full health really fast without relying on other players. And Magsaw, they can't do this easily. They don't really have this, the heals in the same way. Now I know that some of you are going to go, well, the Twilight, the Twilight, Dan, the Twilight. The Twilight is broken, it's busted, we know this, okay? What I've done is I've kind of taken the Twilight's value from elsewhere as a kind of a benchmark because I do suspect it's going to get nerfed next patch. And if it doesn't, we would obviously add a note in the description, okay? As for the group heal strength, this focuses on how many people can you heal at once and how easy is it for you to maintain the health bars, keeping them nice and high or just helping them bounce back from the brink of death. Now Magsalk with the Twilight isn't bad at this, if you look at the elsewhere version, but it can only heal a few people at once, and if the pet's dead, well you're out of luck, and if you have no pet, you're screwed. So it's why it's quite a kind of an eh score, it's not great, it's not bad, it's eh. And then class identity is a measure of how distinct is your class in PvP. Basically, could other people work out what your class is easily? Go, oh, that's a, that's a magical sorcerer, or oh, there's a Nightblade, he's gone invisible. And it's also your ability to be able to slot a range of useful class abilities. Not like a Stamsalk where you're literally just using weapon skills, pretty much. So as you can tell, Magsalk is clearly a high class identity rating here because most of their skills are actually from their class kit. So all in all, what this means basically is that the Magic of Sorcerer is a great solo class, or is really good in duos, but the more people you add, the less effective they become. And they're only really able to fulfill a damage role. That said, they are an absolute blast to play and they're well worth giving a go, especially in Battlegrounds. Now, as I said, there's an easy to set up build on my channel that's well worth a look. What you will see is that the Magic of Sorcerer works well in solo because of its high burst, it's got good mobility, okay sustain and defense. Therefore, if you're wanting a class that can fight Outnumbered or Exxon, then you want to focus on the Burst, the Sustain, Movement and Defence. Healing is a nice touch too, so take that knowledge into the next charts that we're going to look at in a moment. As for the group play, well you want to focus more on the AoE damage, more utility, you can forego some single target damage and even defence. And for tanking and healing, well it's obvious, just use your common sense, don't be daft. Now that we've gone through the Magsalk fully and we focus on all the categories and actually what do they mean, why are they scored like this, we're now going to go through each class and talk about what they're good at, what they're bad at, but not go through the same detail, okay? It's more of an overview, so feel free to pause it, rewind it, watch it again, but I will touch upon is it good to solo, is it good for small scale, BGs, so on. And as I said, feel free to use these images, share them with other people, download them, I don't mind. Just make sure that people know that they come from our channel, okay? They will also be on our website very soon. As for Stamsalk, well Stamsalk is a hard hitting class. It's highly mobile and it has great sustain. And it's really really hard to take down. They have crazy strong self heals, lots of passive healing. They also have negate, so bring some utility but not much. They do sadly have issues with their class identity as we touched upon. They also lack dot damage, but all in all they're a solid class to pick up 
and they're really easy to stay alive on, especially for stamina. Their kit makes them better suited to solo or small scale, and they become less and less effective the more players there are, similar to Magsalk. Stamsalks can work well in BGs, thanks to their speed, just the main downside is that they can't heal other players, and they can tank okay, but they're not great. So they won't make good healers, they won't make good tanks, in all honesty. Now we're going to look at Magicka Templar. This class is absolutely busted, okay? If, if you're a Magplar main, I'm sorry, it's busted, okay? I've played, I jumped the Magplar, and this is the most broken thing that I've played in a very long time. It's literally the king of healing, support, damage, you name it, it's got everything. It's a really well-rounded class, and all the upper classes need to be as strong as this one, in all honesty. They have Purge, they can literally bounce back from death with just crazy strong burst deals. I watched one guy in BGs the other day heal himself for 16,000 into one button, I was like, what? And anyway, anyway, they have really good burst, really good single target damage. They're also able to attack multiple people thanks to their jabs, which is an AoE ability. They've got a good AoE ult. They're just innately tanky, and they're really hard to bring down if they're played well. They obviously lack a little bit of dot damage, and mobility can be an issue meaning they have to run misform or race against time, but for such a strong kit, it's well worth it. All in all, as I've said, they're one of the strongest classes this patch, and they're just really versatile. They're able to fulfill all roles in all content, BGs, duo, small scale, and even large scale PvP. Honestly, it's a must play if you ask me. They can do everything, heal, tank, damage, you name it. Now, Stamina Templar, obviously like Magicka Templar, they have great burst, but it's even stronger thanks to the weapon skills like Onslaught. Their jabs hit really, really hard, like stupidly hard. They have good defense, they've got good sustain, and they can shrug off negative effects whilst being able to move faster than their targets. This just makes them really, really hard to take down and really mobile, so they're one of the better stamina classes in the game. All in all, Stamina Templar shines in solo PvP and small scale, but like with Stamina Sorcerer, the bigger the group gets, the more lackluster they become. They are also pretty good in BGs because, again, there's less people to fight. As for Magic and Nightblade, this is a controversial one. Some people love it, some people hate it, but it's a very unique class. It's got a strong class identity. It can teleport, go invisible, move around the battlefield, so it has high movement. They have a really good burst combo, but it can be a little bit awkward to get off. As for their spammables, they're not bad. They don't compete with Magsorc, but they're still decent. Now, instead of obviously having those crazy burst combos and those crazy spammables, they do sacrifice some of that spammable damage for dots, and they have crazy AoE bursts. Like, literally, they can one-shot multiple people, or even Zergs at once. It's just crazy. The downside with the Magblade is that they lack a burst deal. It makes self-healing just a little bit harder than it should be. And as for group healing and just group utility, well, they have nothing in all honesty. As such, they are really good for solo play or in geos and they can work in battlegrounds well but beyond that they don't really do anything else other than being a bomber maybe a tank but that's about it so we do obviously have some bomb builds on the channel and we also have a damage dealer build on the channel as well which is well worth a look it's called shroud now for stamina nightblade this is a class that has a really good identity again like magblade it's very clear you're on a stealth class their burst combo is a little bit better because surprise attack hits harder but the downside is, it's really, really predictable, so it's hard to get off. You've got the potential, if it works, you one-shot people. If it doesn't, you're absolutely screwed. The healing's a bit, eh, it's not bad. But what they kind of sacrifice with that is they're gaining movement. Their ability to get around the battlefield is just next to none. You can find that you can simply reset the fights by going in cloak, rolling and getting away. The problem is that if you don't move well, you are really squishy and you will die incredibly fast. They also have a little bit of AoE damage, not massive, if you use Soul Tether, but as I said, it's not used too often. All in all, they're a great solo class, or best played in pairs, and they can work in Battlegrounds, but they bring absolutely no support. So you will find people get quite frustrated with you if you don't actually help them. And then obviously, as for the larger groups, they don't really bring anything to the table. They can't heal, they can't do AoE damage, they're literally a solo gank build, they're an assassin. That's kind of what they're designed to do. You either play as an assassin, or you play as an assassin. We have a build on the channel for that, but that's kind of all they can do in PvP in all honesty. That's this patch, maybe it's different in the future. As for Magicka Dragonite, this is a controversial class, okay? In Jaws, they are ridiculously good. 
but compared to other classes it does have weaknesses when you compare things like battlegrounds serial performance group performance and so on and the weaknesses become more and more sort of apparent they're really weird in that you kind of have to build for one mode like i build for all damage or all sustain or all defense whereas other classes you can kind of mix it up a bit so you end up having like a weakness in one area or even more than one area they have a burst potential for sure but it's so so hard to get off and if the target isn't a vampire then it's, it's actually quite meh like your whip will hit for 4,000 to 7,000 at the very very most now that's not going to kill anybody anytime soon is it people have like 25k health 4k a hit is not going to do it thankfully they do get some of their damage from the dots but again these are a bit uh, the bit the bit terrible in all honesty the save and grace however is that they're tanky and they're like really tanky for a magical class they're hard to bring down they do though have issues with self-healing mainly a burst heal they don't really have a good burst heal it's expensive it doesn't heal as much as it could do compared to the other magical classes and they don't really have any group abilities either they've got some stuff so all in all if you want to play a magda ego they're kind of better for group based like small scale in large group they bring absolutely nothing in solo they don't they don't have the kit you need to survive on they can work in bgs because there's less people to fight but in all honesty a magda ego in this patch currently needs some buffs it just it needs some fixing now for stamina dk it's kind of if you really want to look at extremes of one class to another version and kind of how could it be if it was fixed this is it stamina dk is so different to magical dk everything that mag dk struggles with stam dk fixes thanks to their weapon skills and all their kind of reliance on that everything they do just hits harder they have better sustain they've got better burst and they also have really good dots as well because of the class dots and the weapon dots they're tanky as well, and they obviously have access to the heavy armor passives or the medium so they can fix their movement issues. They have good sustain with Bloodspawn, which is obviously alt gen, which becomes resources because of their passives. What they lack is obviously group utility, group support, group healing. Their self heal though, for some reason, is just so much better than Mag DK because of Rally. They can obviously get major mending, pop Rally, full health instant. Like they can literally bounce back from 0 to 100. It's really, really stupid. Just when you compare Mag DK to Stam DK, it's just so, so like, stark, the difference. If you are after a build, we do actually have one on the channel. It's really good. But like with a lot of stamina classes, you'll see that they work really well in solo, in kind of duo or small scale. But the more there are, the less effective they get. Stam DK can work in BGs, but they're, little, they're not as good in all honesty, because they are a bit more reliant on the CP for some of their damage. Now we're getting on to the kind of first DLC class, and this is Magical Warden, which you do need to buy in order to access. You can buy it from the Crown Store, or you can buy Morrowind, but by god, are they fun. Um, I'm a Magnum main, I've been playing the class since it came out basically, solidly. It is such a good class. They're literally the king of AoE damage. Like, every attack they do is just AoE based. And they can line up multiple AoE skills at once in just the normal rotation. You don't have to actually have to focus on AoE damage, you just have it built in. They're also stupidly tanky, so they can stay in melee range for a lot longer than other mag classes. They have good sustain. Their mobility is, is better than most because you've got access to wings. But where they really shine in all honesty is their group utility. They just bring so many powerful buffs to the group. Major protection, major defile to debuff the enemy, the snares, AoE damage, just loads of good stuff. And then they also have loads of heals, so they obviously can heal the group with obviously Corrupting Pollen or Budding Seed or the Healing Thicket or the Living Trellis. So in all honesty, they make really good healers in PvP, some of the best if you ask me. So if you are a Magden, it's really clear that you will have this kind of unique feel into any other class. The problem is though that they lack an execute. So yes, you can burst somebody or even a group of people, but if you don't have the execute, you can't kill them. So you find that it's really hard to kill people without an ultimate. So they kind of work really well in sort of groups in all honesty. It's why you don't see many 1vx clips because they're not as good. They're quite hard to play in 1vx. They kind of punish bad players in all honesty. As for battlegrounds, they're really good in battlegrounds though. All in all, they're great damage dealers, healers and tanks alike. Now if you kind of think, oh, Magical Warden sounds pretty juicy, pretty good. <laughs> Wait till you see Stamina Warden. If you took everything a Magical Warden was good at, and then you went actually they're really bad at these things and we're going to fix all of those things but we're going to go give it to another variant stamina warden that's what you get stamina warden basically takes all the good stuff of magical warden and fixes all the bad stuff through weapon skills and you just get this really really lethal thing it's literally one of the best classes in pvp 
They're hard to take down, they have great sustain. I can literally turn around and nuke one or multiple people with many variants. There's loads of build options. And then they can also heal their allies for a stamina class, which is just absolutely bonkers. They also have group utility, thanks to healing trees, permafrost, all that good stuff. All in all, it's actually quite hard to find something they can't do. If you want a stamina class that can kind of do everything, a jack of all, make a stamina. They're really, really good. And there's a build on the channel that is just tanky and has high damage. Honestly, stamina has a really strong kit. As such, they work well in solo, small scale, large groups, and battlegrounds if you want. Now we're coming to our second DLC class. This is the Necromancer. The Magica Necromancer comes with Elsewhere. Now this is a really thematic class. If you want a class with just strong class identity going, look, you are a Necromancer, you feel completely different to everybody else, this is for you. Actually on paper, and if you look at the kit, the kit is really good. They've got good damage, good sustain, good just tankiness. The problem is they have bugs in their kits and it just, it, they're just clunky to use. They've got loads of hiccups. Now they are due some revamps, but in its current form it really struggles as a damage dealer. And in all honesty it's more of a support role, a bit like Magical Warden. It can heal well, it can tank, it can do good damage. Mobility is pretty average for the Magical class. All in all it's very well rounded, but as I said, the issue is just reliability. Which, if you can't get your damage off reliable, it's not a good class. So they perform better in smaller groups, and then obviously in large groups or battlegrounds they work absolutely fine. As such, you find they're not really great for solo. You don't see many 1vx clips with Magical Necromancer. It's possible, but it's just it's just less likely. And if you want some builds, I do have a few builds on the channel for group ones and damage ones and all that good stuff. Okay. And then our last one is Stamina Necromancer. Now, like Stamina Warden, it literally takes all the good stuff from Magical Necromancer and basically fixes all the bad stuff with weapon skills. So basically, you get this kind of really good class. It's got better burst, better damage, it's just better in every area in all honesty. It's tankier, it's one of the tankiest stamina classes you can actually play in PvP. They also have great debuffs, they can provide good group utility, they've got some off heals thanks to the little spirit mender dude. All in all you don't actually have to build to heal, they just kind of have it built in. And then the ultimates make them to be really good tanks. They're honestly a better version of a Magical Necromancer, but as with a Magical Necromancer they both have the same issue with Blast Bones. As I said, it's due a rework, and if they do fix it, then this will be a phenomenal class. Currently, they work really well solo because of the weapon skills, and they work well in groups of any size and in battlegrounds. And we are working on a build that will be releasing for the next patch, so make sure that you subscribe to see that as we plan to put more and more builds. Now, having covered all of the classes, you're probably thinking, what can I take from this? What does this all mean? Well, what you can see is that Magicka on the whole is just better suited towards large group play, so it's got better support, better heals. What they lack though is the burst, and no mobility. This means that magical classes are generally harder to play solo. There's a few exceptions like magical sorcerer which is somewhat there because their burst is so much higher than the rest of magical classes. Stamina on the other hand is the opposite. It hits significantly harder, it moves faster, it's easier to stay alive on because of all the movement and just the more you stack damage the bigger your heals are. As such, stamina is just better to X on, but if you get more and more players they become less and less effective. So if you want a class that is solo, then you should obviously pick a class that has really good movement and high burst that you can get off reliably. Without getting off reliably, you just find the Xing really hard. If you lack the movement, you're going to die. If you lack the damage, you're going to die. That's what Xing needs. Good movement, high burst, and the ability to actually just take multiple hits at once. If you're thinking of large groups though, this is where Magicka shines. You want a class that has more utility, more AoE damage, and that's obviously a key part to group play. And then obviously healers, well it's pretty obvious, pick a class that has good heals. Good group heals, good group utility. Templars, Wardens and even Magicka Necros are really great at this. And tanks, well tanks work well on most classes, just stack health. But for me personally, the best tanks are Warden tanks because they actually bring other useful things like good buffs, good debuffs, healing. There's actually a build on the channel that is a, like a tanky healer thing, it's really really cool. It's by Gloku. But all in all, this video as I said is aimed at giving an overview of each class for all of the content in PvP. And it's just to help you work out what you should play in Battlegrounds, in Serial, Jaws, you name it. I hope that this video has done that and that you can actually use these charts to just nerd out on or just kind of make future characters with a better insight. Now if you like these kind of videos then leave a like as it will let me know that you want to see more of this kind of stuff. And why not leave a comment to let me know what you think or if you've got a question or even if you enjoy it. And before I forget, I want to say a big thanks to Captain TJ who is helping fund the channel and our website development on Patreon 
And with that said guys, I am going to call the video here. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care and bye.